Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Each morning during the seven days of the Feast of Hanukkah, at the time of the sacrifice, the priest would proceed to the fountain of Shiloh with a golden pitcher and fill it with water. He was accompanied by a solemn procession and bore the pitcher of water back to the altar. And he would take that and the drink sacrifice that had been offered and pour them into two perforated bowls. And the trumpets would sound and the people would sing Isaiah 12, verse 3. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water from the wells of salvation. And so it was on the last day of the feast of Hanukkah, the great day, that Jesus called out like a herald for all to hear. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Jesus himself is the source of salvation. It is like what he said to the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well. If you knew the gift of God and who it was you were speaking to, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. You see, the problem is, is that we have in our sinfulness forsaken this fountain, this living water that God offers freely. The people in the Old Testament had done the same thing. In the book of Jeremiah, the God condemned the people saying, my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. What he's saying is that the people have not only abandoned the worship of true God, but they have created for themselves useless idols that can do nothing for them. And as it was in the days of Jeremiah, it was at the time of Christ, where the people needed to be called back to a living, vibrant, active faith. And so it is today that Jesus needs to call out that people might hear this message of salvation that comes only in the person of Jesus Christ. He calls us back to himself out of our false religious systems. He calls us to return to him the fountain of living waters. Jesus doesn't call to those who have no need of forgiveness. Those people don't exist. He doesn't call to those who are self-righteous, who don't think they need him. He calls to those who are thirsty, those who are sinners, who recognize their deep thirst. And he says, come to me. Prostitutes, drug addicts, drunks, sexually immoral, promiscuous, liars, cheats, greedy, thieves, gossips, idolaters, the insolent, everyone, come to me for salvation. I have delivered you from your sin. Believe in me. This isn't about a respectable Christianity full of form and ritual and rites. Rather, it is the human God, God made flesh, who has descended to be with us, to deliver us from sin, to offer full and free forgiveness, to call people from every age and language and nationality. He provides the living waters and says, come everyone who thirsts, to come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. This is the faith of free forgiveness, the life of love liberated from the law's demands, the kindness of the King of Kings, the grace of a giver God. And truly, as we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost this day, we celebrate his gift, in particular, the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, what Jesus was pointing to is he was pointing forward to the work of the Holy Spirit as he preached on that day. And he promised the gift of the Holy Spirit. He says that it had been prophesied throughout the Old Testament scripture. And so we hear on Pentecost Sunday, Peter calling out, saying, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
And you see, every single Christian in the waters of baptism receives that same gift. God comes and makes his dwelling with you. And so the Holy Spirit, God, has come to you and is at work in your life. He is the one who gives you faith, enlivening you. He is the one who sustains you in your faith. By this gift, you are holy, declared righteous for the sake of Christ through faith in him. But more than that, the Holy Spirit is at work sanctifying you, producing the fruit of righteousness in your life. Not that you get any credit for it, but it's God at work in you and through you. Luther talks about this faith, saying, oh, it is a living, busy, active, powerful thing that we have faith. So it is impossible for it not to do good unceasingly. Nor does it ask whether good works are to be done, but before the question is asked, it has wrought them and is always engaged in doing them. It is impossible to separate from faith, works from faith. Yea, just as it is impossible for heat and light to be separated from fire. The Holy Spirit at work in you produces good works. This life, this sanctified, this holy, righteous life. And you see, all of this is fruit of the Holy Spirit at work in your life. There's a conflict between the flesh and and the Spirit. The Spirit is opposed to the things of the flesh. And the Spirit is oppo- the flesh is opposed to the things of the Spirit. But the Spirit is at work in you and through you. And he bears fruit in your life. The fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there are no laws. This is the Holy Spirit at work giving you the gift of life. And so, dear friends, as ones who believe in Jesus, not ones who historically believed in Jesus, but ones who have an active living faith by this working of the Holy Spirit, who have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, to you who have drunk deeply of the wells of salvation, now out of Your hearts flows living waters. This is an ancient promise rooted in the Old Testament scriptures. He who gives and sustains life in you, it flows out of you to others. These are not stagnant waters, lifeless waters that can do nothing. No, just as a river is at work in and through and is constantly flowing, the Holy Spirit who has come and dwells in you flows from you and is at work in and through you for the sake of your neighbor. And it all comes because of the cross in the glory of Christ crucified. The Holy Spirit comes with this message of salvation. He brings salvation to you and he works in and through you. To the glory of God. And so this Pentecost, just as Peter proclaimed this message, just as Jesus proclaimed this message, Christ proclaims his message to you through his word. He says to you, come to me, you who are thirsty. Let him come to me and drink. In Jesus' name, amen.